students today we are going to discuss about the plasma substitutes there are few factors which basically instigate us to look for some plasma substitutes those factors are limited supply of plasma high cost of producing right plasma because it involves number of steps and third risk of transmitting serum hepatitis we have already discussed under the dried human plasma that the incidences of contaminating the plasma with the serum jaundice and serum hepatitis viruses and infection are much higher because probability of adding an infected blood into your pool is always there so these three factors basically instigate us to look for some substitutes which can be used in place of plasma either temporarily until either we are supplied with that plasma or the body gets sufficient time so that it can replenish its lost proteins further the efforts are made to look for non human origin plasma substitutes now what are the properties of an ideal plasma substitute kya kya properties honi chahiye hamare ideal plasma substitute first obviously the osmotic pressure of my substitute has to be same as that of the whole blood second its viscosity has to be similar to your plasma third high molecular weight should be there for your plasma substitute so that the molecules of your substitutes do not easily diffuse through your capillary walls your substitute should have fairly low rate of excretion or destruction by the body next it should have eventual and complete elimination once the work is done by that substitute next your substitute has to be free from toxicity any type of antigenicity or pyrogenicity it should not initiate any immunological response in the body it should not cause impairment of any organ function for example kidney it should not carry pyrogens which will eventually cause unnecessary uh, fever like symptoms in an individual next your plasma substitute should be isotonic with the blood plasma it should have high stability in the liquid form at normal and sterilizing temperature and it should be stable during transport and storage and it should be very easy for preparation that substitute has to be readily available and should be of low cost if any substitute fulfill most of these requirements few of them are very very necessary if the substitute fulfill these requirements then that substitute can be used as a plasma substitute now we will discuss few examples we will discuss three main examples where uh the synthetic non i will not call it synthetic non human origin substances can be used as a plasma substitute the first example is gum saline the official preparation for this plasma substitute is injection of sodium chloride and potassium and it is officially 1932 british pharmacopeia officially it contains 6% acacia in 0.9% sodium chloride solution during the first world war this particular plasma substitute was very much used but later because of indication like liver dysfunctioning this substitute now has limited usage basically gum is 
not metabolized in the body but it is stored in the various organs this basically leads to liver dysfunction which ultimately lead to discontinuation of this particular um, plasma substitute the second example is polyvinyl pyrolidone during the second world war in the 1950s in germany this polyvinyl pyrolidone was very much used as a plasma substitute but later it was found to be carcinogenic and its use is now discontinued the third plasma substitute which we will be discussing in detail and which has a very large application as a plasma substitute and it's the most satisfactory plasma substitute till date is the dextrin dextrin is a polysaccharide produced when bacterium leuconostoc mesenteroids is grown in a sucrose containing medium what happens when this bacteria is grown in a sucrose containing media this organism secretes an enzyme called dextrin sucrase this enzyme catalyzes the conversion of n sucrose into dextrin and fructose as a byproduct this fructose is later used by the organism so this organism secretes this enzyme in the presence of sucrose containing media and it will catalyze the conversion of n sucrose to dextrin and fructose now different strains of this bacteria can produce different types of dextrins so we have two different types of dextrins which can be produced by different different strains of this bacteria the first type is the long type in which majorly glucose units are linked together by one six glucosidic linkage and the chain is unbranched type the second type is short highly branched dextrins in this along with 16 glucosidic linkage 14 and 13 linkage is also present at the branches out of these two branch chain is highly allergic and it is not generally used at as plasma substitute so for dextrin to act as a plasma substitute we require the unbranched long dextrin chains which majorly contain 16 glucosidic linkages we all know that dextrin is a polysaccharide where the basic unit is in glucose and glucose units are linked together via 16 glucosidic linkage and to act as a plasma substitute dextrin has to has a particular chain length because if the chain length is not sufficient or it exceeds some limit then that dextrin will not be suitable as a plasma substitute for a dextrin the appropriate chain length is between 
one lakh to two lakh fifty thousand. Above two lakh fifty thousand, if the chain is containing more number of units, then that dextrin will have serious drawbacks, which include number one, high viscosity, which will be very difficult to administer. Number two, it will cause renal damage. Number three, it will be highly allergic. Number four, it will induce Rolex formation. Rolex are aggregates of RBCs that resemble piles of plates. And the fifth major drawback with the dextrin chain exceeding 250,000 is that the product will have osmotic pressure lower than those of the small molecule. So the osmotic pressure will not be appropriate. Below 1 lakh or specifically below 60,000 because we have few preparations which we will be discussing which will lie in between this range which are used for few applications. So below 60,000 if the dextrin chain length is there then that chain will have few drawbacks which include rapid excretion in urine and number two it will be lost in tissue fluid so the appropriate range will be somewhat here and more appropriate will be if you have your dextrin in between this particular range between one lakh to two lakh fifty thousand between 60 to 1 lakh, the major issue with the dextrin is it is lost in tissue fluid. So, while selecting the dextrin as a plasma substitute, the chain length is very, very important. Now, while we are synthesizing a dextrin, using our organism we will get variable length of the dextrin chain which has to be reduced to the size which is acceptable as a plasma substitute so we have different different methods in which that chain length can be reduced the first method is acid hydrolysis under this process the dextrin is adjusted to the ph of 2 and is heated to 90 degrees Celsius. In this process, the pH is first adjusted and the mixture is heated to 90 degrees Celsius. As the hydrolysis proceeds, the preparation becomes less and less viscous and you can stop once the required viscosity is attained. The second method is thermal degradation. Under this method, a solution of a dextrin is heated under pressure at 160 degrees Celsius in the presence of sodium sulfide. The sodium sulfide is added to prevent oxidative deterioration. Along with that, calcium carbonate is also added, which basically neutralizes the acidity. The third method is ultrasonic disintegration. 
In this method, the dextrin solution is bombarded with ultrasonic waves which split the long dextrin molecules into fragments of appropriately same size. But, but this technique has one major disadvantage that this is highly expensive. We have the fourth option where we basically seed the fermenter in which we are producing the dextrin. By seeding the fermenter with a low chain length dextrin, that dextrin will act as a template for the bacterium and that bacterium will start producing the dextrins of the same template, of the same size. Now discussing the production of a dextrin, dextrin is produced in a similar way as the antibiotic is produced using a fermenter. The production is similar in many aspects to how the antibiotic is produced but there are few differences and few things which you need to be kept in mind while producing a dextrin. Number one, the high degree of asepsis which we basically regulate during the antibiotic production is not required over here because as soon as the enzyme is produced, dextrin sucrase the enzyme which is produced by the organism which convert and sucrose to your dextrin. As soon as that enzyme is produced, that enzyme will initiate the conversion of sucrase into dextrin. So, we do not require a very high degree of asepsis. There is no need for a costly supply of sterile air over here because the process is basically inhibited when we supply air when we aerate our mixture. So we do not require that thing. We need to prevent hydrolysis of sucrose while sterilization. The sucrose can get converted into glucose and fructose. If this thing happens, then there will be very, it will be difficult to produce the dextrin. Next, we need to adjust the pH of the media to neutral before sterilization. And last, we need to avoid overheating of the media during sterilization. Now, once the production of dextrin has took place, the sucrose uh, under the presence of the enzyme dextrin sucrase get converted into dextrin. And the sufficient chain length dextrin is now in our fermenter. We need to um, fractionate out our dextrin. And this fractionation basically takes place using organic solids. Various organic solvents like acetone, or alcohol have been used to carry out the fractionation of dextrin and how narrow the fraction lies, how narrow the uh, chain length of your fraction lies that will be determined by the cost of the product. The selected fractions need purification. Once you isolate a fraction of your interest, that fraction requires purification steps. The first step requires removal of reducing sugars. The fermentation process involves production of fructose as a byproduct, which need to be removed while producing a fraction of dextrin and this is basically done via solvent precipitation. The second purification technique which is required is the removal of the solvent 
organic solvent which we have used for fractionation and it is done by evaporation under pressure the third purification involves the removal of inorganic salts and it is done by demineralization in a mixed bed iron exchange it is very important to remove phosphates because they can cause precipitation during storage or sterilization next purification is removal of any color if it is there and it is done by absorption on activated charcoal and next is removal of pyrogens and it is again done by absorption to asbestos or cellulose derivatives and the last is removal of any microorganism if it is there and it is done via passing your prepared dextrins through fibrous pads or by bottling a membrane filter to be used. Once all these purification techniques are done, a solution is diluted to a concentrated concentration of 5% dextrin in either a 5% dextrose injection or sodium chloride injection and it is packed in soda like waters, closed and finally it is sterilized via autoclave. So all these steps are required after the fermentation process by the organism is done. Now we have few official dextrin preparations with us. The first official preparation is the American type of dextrins where the average molecular weight is 75,000. The aim of using this preparation is to restore the colloidal osmotic pressure quickly and to ensure fairly rapid elimination of the colloids from the body. But this particular dextrin preparation, it has its own share of issues. Uh, it induces Rolex formation and um, high dosage is necessary to compensate for the excretion losses during um, its activity. The second official preparation is British Pharmacopoeia, which is official in BP 1963. Here they have listed in official preparation under the name dextrin 150 injection where the average molecular weight of the dextrin chain is 150,000. This preparation caused the Rolex formation. Uh, it basically slowed down the flow of blood in your capillaries to overcome this issue in BP 1968, this preparation is replaced by dextrin 110 injection, where the average molecular weight now is 1 lakh 10,000. There is one more preparation having an altogether different usage that is dextrin 40 injection. Here the average molecular weight is 40,000 and its usage is in conditions including severe burns, crash injuries and acute peritonitis. 
which is accomplished by a severe degree of sludging in a blood. Your blood flow is very, very slow in your veins. There, this particular dextrin is administered, which administered, which lower the plasma viscosity and improves the capillary flow. Both these changes, uh, low viscosity and uh, you know improved capillary flow, reduces cell aggregation. and in turn improves the flow. Now the official preparations are subjected to food test before it can be used as it can be had suitable for uh, usage as a plasma substitute. Those tests includes first category are your chemical test and the chemical test um, amount of lead, acetone, alcohol, reducing sugar, nitrogen, and acid and alkali are basically monitored. And if the ranges are well within the limits, then the preparation um, passes the test. The second category of test are your biological test, where you basically test for pyrogens, sterility, and whether your um, preparation is free from proteins which can cause anaphylactic reactions. The dextrin content is also determined and that content is determined using polarimeter. In this uh, Rabbits are injected with a particular dose of dextrin and their urine is collected after fixed intervals and the sample is analyzed polarimetrically to check whether the how much amount of dextrin is excreted in the urine and it has to be less than 30 percent um, after 48 hours. And the last test which your dextrin has to undergo is the limit test for small and large fragments, dextrin fragments. Here, uh, a particular concentration of dextrin solution is prepared and it is precipitated in different different fractions using organic solvents and the viscosity of that fraction is monitored and it the first or the top 10 percent of the fraction viscosity has to be less than 0.4 if it happens that means the average molecular weight is nearly 2,40,000. Thank you.